The second seminar that we put on uh, at our 40th anniversary celebration was called Social Networking Made Simple, a presentation by Kelly Flint of Constant Contact. And there you learn all the little innuendos about how to really do an email marketing campaign, how to use Facebook and LinkedIn, an exciting new seminar for you. Next, I'd like to present doing social media marketing made simple Kelly Flint, who's Regional Development Director for Constant Contact. Kelly? You take it as you want. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing? Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. And we're going to talk about social media marketing for your business. We're going to make this easy. And we've got some really amazing examples to share with you in this presentation. I'm Kelly Flint, I'm with Constant Contact. I belong to them, I'm an, a local. I live in Long Beach, if you consider that local. And I present all over Los Angeles and Orange County topics like social media marketing made simple and the power of email marketing. So come see me, many of our seminars are free and we are all about educating. So today, here's my information. I'd love to stay connected with you. I personally use Facebook a whole lot, so you can find me there, but use whatever tool you like best to engage with me. And today's presentation, I'm going to send you a copy of it, if you would like, in a PDF. All I need is your business card, so drop it into this fantastic blue bowl, and I will send you one email. It doesn't mean you're signed up for my email list. I practice good email marketing best practices. In addition, I'm going to do a raffle today, and I'm going to give away three books. And so here are the books that we're giving away. First, I've got Constant Contacts Guide to Email Marketing, a $24.95 value could be yours. <laughs> And we've got two of those to give away. And then this book, Social Media Marketing for Dummies. If you win this book, you are not a dummy, okay? It's a great reference guide. And things have changed since this book was published. As you know, things change very quickly in Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, but it's still a great reference guide. A $39.95 value could be yours. So here's what I'd like to cover this afternoon. In today's agenda, I'd first like to define social media marketing, what it is, how it works, and why you should use it for your business. And then in the second session, we'll get into best practices. Things like which tools you should use. We'll share real world examples of other small businesses who've used social media marketing in successful ways. We'll talk about content, growing your presence using social media marketing, and then the three M's, which are managing your time, measuring what's going on, and monitoring, because social media marketing tools are free, but your time is necessary to use those tools, right? And do you know the value of your time if you had to pay yourself? So we gotta watch our time in social media marketing. And then we'll get into an overview of the anatomy of Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Does this sound all right with you? All right, then let's do it. So let's talk about the what, the how, and the why of social media marketing. First of all, I'd like to start with a question. You don't have to answer it. I just want you to think about it. Where do you expect the majority of next month's revenue to come from for your business? And the simple answer to that question is this. Your existing customers. And this is important with social media marketing. When you're using it, it's a great tool to stay in front of customers and keep them happy because they do something magical for you. So let's talk about the five different types of people that you'll come in contact with using social media marketing, or these could also be known as the five stages that people are in in their relationship with you. And the first bucket is the bucket I like the best, and these are your raving fans. This includes maybe your brother or sister or your mom or your husband, that's okay. These people are telling everybody about you. They love what it is you do, and they're doing your marketing for you. 
The next bucket are your current customers. These people have already made that purchase from you. Then you've got prospects, people who haven't yet purchased from you, but they know about you or they have a need for whatever it is you do or you sell. And then you've got suspects, the people that maybe they don't know you yet or maybe right now they don't need whatever it is you do or sell. And finally, the last bucket are the disinterested. And here's what we suggest when doing your social media marketing, avoid this bucket. Yeah, instead focus your efforts here on these four buckets because here's what works with them. The raving fans and the current customers, if you keep them updated and share with them tips and advice and give them information that they need, then they bring to the table for you on your behalf prospects and suspects. They help you to fill these two buckets. So when using social media marketing, really focus on these two first buckets in your communication efforts. So let's share a few statistics for you. I know some people need these statistics to know if they should be using social media marketing for their business. And social media is now the new word of mouth in the digital age. And look at this statistic, 14% of people trust ads while 78% of people trust consumer recommendations. They want to hear from other people, right? People don't buy from companies, they buy from people. And by having a presence of social media, you are then giving them the opportunity to voice their opinion of what it's like to work or to buy from you. Here's a couple more statistics for you today. One is, 38% of Facebook's 500 million users are over the age of 35. That's more than 57 million people. So this isn't just for the kids anymore, right? And I'm sure some of your customers fall into that age range of over 35. Here's a couple more statistics for you. 56% of people say that they're more likely to recommend, recommend a brand after becoming a fan on Facebook. And becoming a fan on Facebook is just clicking that like button when you go to somebody's Facebook page. Not only that, 75% of people are somewhat or highly likely to share content they like online with their friends, their families, their coworkers, other like-minded individuals. So that's why it's a good idea to use social media marketing for your business. Because the most important thing is people are going to want to engage with you, but on their terms, where they like to engage the most. So here's how we define it. Social media marketing is building your social network of fans, of followers, of connections. And for today's purposes, we'll just call it your audience, your social audience. And you do that by providing relevant and interesting content, which then reaches and engages more people and drives more business your way. Or in the case of the nonprofits that are in the room, drives more donations your way, or volunteers. Where are the nonprofits? Just wondering. There you are. Okay, good, good to have you here. Thank you for what you do. Now, all these tools that are out there, there's hundreds if not thousands of tools that you can use for your business. Which ones should you be using? And we'll make this really simple. The quick answer is be where your customers are. So let's talk about the different types of tools and we'll put them in five categories. The first category are the most popular of the tools. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, these are social networking tools. And just like if you go to a networking um, mixer or maybe here as you're networking with people and you're meeting face to face, these tools allow you to do that, but online. They give you an online human face, because some people may never actually get the opportunity to meet you face to face, and this may be the only way they get to do that. The next type or 
category of social media marketing tools are content sharing tools. So if you write a blog, or maybe you have videos on YouTube, or maybe you share photos on Flickr, or maybe you share presentations, all of those tools are considered content sharing tools. The next category are reviews and re rating sites. And many of us are using these before we make a purchase. Some of them are OpenTable, Homestars, TripAdvisor, Yelp. Have any of you ever read a review before purchasing or planning that trip? Yeah. So these types of social tools, they are trying to level the playing field. They're basically saying, hey, we're going to collect reviews from people who've worked with you or bought your product or service, and we're gonna allow them to say positive things as well as negative things. And we're gonna leave it all there so that others can now go and read those reviews. And they're trying to keep it organic. The next category are location-based services, like Foursquare, Facebook Places, Gowalla, all of these tools allow you to check in. Did anybody check in today that's using any of these tools? Okay, I see a few hands, great. So what do we mean by checking in? Well, with my smartphone, if I'm using Foursquare, for example, I can say, hey, I'm here today in Ventura at this fantastic expo, and I'm doing X, Y, Z. It's like a GPS finder, it says, Kelly is here in this place, and this is, and then I get to say what I'm doing here, and that is broadcast to all my fans and followers and connections I have on Foursquare, and I can also share it on Facebook as well. So why would businesses want to use a location-based social tool? Well, if you have a restaurant, for example, and people are visiting your restaurant, you would want to encourage them to check in and you might give them a special offer, maybe a free soda with their meal, because when they're checking in at your place of business or wherever you might be physically, they're telling all of their friends and family and followers where they are, and that promotes you. The next category are social bookmarking tools. So as thought leaders, all of you know more about your business than anybody else, and you're subject experts, and you probably go on Google, online, and you look for information, and you read, and you research, and you find stuff that makes sense for you to share with your customers, right? And you have all these links of different websites you visited with information that's going to be relevant to your customers. These bookmarking social bookmarking tools allow you to put all of that great information into one place so that you don't have all these pieces to the puzzle it's putting it in one place and then you share that bookmarking tool with your customers or your fans or your followers here are the most popular of the tools and these are the ones we'll focus on today the social networking tools facebook twitter and linkedin and again, which tools you use can quickly be answered by be where your customers are. Choose the tools that they're currently using so that you can engage with them where they have preference. And with Facebook, there's over 600 million people using that tool. So if you're not using social media for your business yet, this is a great place to start with Facebook. And we're saying you don't have to run out and use all the different types of tools that are out there. If you're just getting started, use one tool, try it out for 90 days. After you feel comfortable, then add another tool to the mix. So you could try out Facebook for 90 days, and if it goes well, maybe you might want to add in YouTube as a second tool, for example. The next tool we'll talk about today is LinkedIn over 100 million users, and just three days ago, did you hear that LinkedIn became a public company? Yes, so they're here to stay. And what LinkedIn does is it allows you as an individual to create an online resume. 
So it's basically telling everybody in the world, this is what you're doing now, and this is what you've done in the past. They're also allowing you to put your company out there too. And the third tool we'll talk about today is Twitter. Now, it's not for everyone, but it's 200 million and growing strong out there tweeting. It's almost like it's in a different language. There's lots of symbols involved, and you've only got 140 characters or less to say whatever it is you want to say to your audience. So it's not for everyone, but if it's a tool that your customers are using, then it's time to jump in and give it a try. So let's jump into real world examples. These are small businesses that are using these social tools and they've had some success. And we'll first, we'll talk about these four. We'll start off with Dingo, and they're a dog treat company, and their slogan is, meet in the middle. And these are all small businesses, by the way. We'll talk about the swinery. They're a butcher shop. We'll talk about Glamour Nails in Spa. Yes, that's where we go get our manis and petties. It's in a strip mall. And we'll talk about Courier Museum of Art. So let's start off with Dingo. All of these examples, by the way, each one of them had a goal, what they wanted to get out of social media marketing. And Dingo had two goals. The first goal was they wanted more people to like them on Facebook to become their fans, because they started with only 330 likes, which is still a lot, don't get me wrong. And they wanted more people to join their email marketing list. So why would they want to do that? What's the difference between social media marketing and email marketing? I like to explain it best like this. Social media marketing is like a cocktail party. You're in a room with a lot of people, and when you get a chance to speak, we say, be brief, be bright, and be gone. Email marketing is a little different. You have more time. It's like a private dinner conversation. And it's an opportunity for your customers to get to, to know you on a deeper level, to ask you questions, and you get to listen to them based on the actions they take in your emails. So again, Dingo wanted to get more people to like them on Facebook, and they wanted to grow their email list. So they launched a campaign, and the campaign was this. Come like us on Facebook, and once we reach our goal of 5,000 likes, we'll give everybody who liked us a coupon you can use online for $20 off. So they launched the campaign, and they started first by going to their email list and sending out an email. And the email simply said, hey, come like us, help us get to 5,000, you'll be, you'll be getting the $20 coupon. They also went on to Facebook and Twitter and told the, their social presence, those people that were using them there, about this special offer. And even the people that had already liked them on Facebook, they're letting them know because they want to generate the buzz and they want them to help bring more fans to Dingo. When you went to Dingo's Facebook page, then you were given the option to join their email list. So right through Facebook, you could put your email address and join Dingo's email list, and Dingo didn't have to do anything because these two tools were connected. So it happened automatically. They didn't have to copy email addresses and put them into their email service provider. It just happened automatically right through Facebook. And here's what Dingo did. They kept everybody up to date on what was going on with this amazing promotion. And so on Facebook, they said, hey, We've reached 600, and then they said, wow, we've passed 1,100, and we just got past 2,000, and now we're at 2,800, and finally they said, you know what? We are almost there. And people went crazy, and the buzz was generated, and some of their raving fans started posting this special offer on Dingo's behalf, on places like this, this is a pet savings blog with coupons and all that good stuff. And somebody went there and posted this promotion that Dingo was having. They didn't even have to do it themselves. So here's what happened. 
The results were they got to over 6,000 likes on Facebook. They grew their email list where they started with almost 9,000 email addresses up to over 14,000, which means that's 5,000 opted in subscribers to their email newsletter. But what's amazing about this story is they did it in only three days. It takes me longer than three days to just tell you the story, right? But here are the important results that we want to share with you. Since Dingo did this special promotion and grew their Facebook presence, here's what happened. Their monthly sales grew 22%. New customers account for 45% of that growth. And 85% of those new customers continue to buy Dingo products. Right, so it's worth it to get in there and use Facebook, right? Don't believe me yet? Okay, I've got more examples for you. Here's the next one. Glamour Nails and Spa. So it's where you go get your manis and petties. It's in a strip mall. And the owner's name is Dom. And what was important to him was he wanted to know which tools he should be using to engage with his customers. Should he be using Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or email? So he did something smart. He did a test so that he could reach out and find out. And he went on to Facebook and he said, come into the salon and say, I love Dom, and I'll give you 20% off your next manicure. He went on to Twitter and he said, come in and say, I love glamour nails and I'll give you 20% off your next manicure. And he went into his email marketing and he said, come in and say, I love getting my nails done, and I'll give you 20% off your next manicure. And literally, Dom, he owns this small business. He runs it, but he also works there. So he's busy doing nails. And as people are coming in and saying, I love Dom, he literally had a notebook. Can I borrow yours? Do you mind? A notebook just like this. And at the top, he wrote Facebook, Twitter, email, and put col uh, columns between them, right? And when somebody came in and said, I love getting my nails done, he made a check in that box. I love Dom, he made a check in that box. And that's how he was able to measure his results, where his customers were engaging with him. You could do this, right? Yeah. So here's what Dom's uh, results were. Thank you very much. So Dom's results were this. He found a majority of the people were listening to him on email, but he also determined that he wanted to continue to use all three tools because it brought in a lot of people into his salon in a very few days. And what he found out was people want to engage with you, but on their terms, where they like to spend their time and using the tools that they prefer. Next, I'd like to share with you the Swinery. This is a butcher shop in Seattle, and they sent out an email, but when they sent out this email, they wanted to reach even more people than just their subscribers. So they did something. They turned on, at the top of the email, something called a social share bar. And you'll see these all over the web now. You see an article you like on a web page, and it allows you, the person reading it, to click on whatever tool you prefer, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and it allows you, the reader, to then share this article on your own Facebook page or Facebook profile or on your Twitter page on behalf of whoever authored that article. So the Swinery has almost 4,000 email subscribers. And when they sent out their email newsletter, they had about a 22% open rate, which isn't bad, because the industry average open rate is between 20 and 22% for email marketing. But because they turned this on, this email was viewed an additional 485 times, and the like button that's up here was clicked by 181 readers, 
which represents a 60% increase in reach. Now, I just want to make sure you know the difference. Here are their Twitter and Facebook page buttons, so you go to the Swinery's Facebook page or Twitter page. But by turning this on, they're allowing people who are reading their email to then share it with their friends and family and connections. And I saw this story and I, saw it. I said, my goodness, this story is quite amazing. What the heck was this email about? And then I read it. Oh, it's an international bacon day party. And they're having free bacon chocolate chip cookies. And they're having $2.50 bacon dogs and $5 bacon burgers and other various uh, bacon filled brunch items. Now, I know a lot of bacon lovers. I have a lot of friends that really love bacon. And I would, even though I'm in Long Beach and this event was happening in Seattle, I would have shared this email because this is a fun event, right? And what they did so well was they used content that inspired sharing. So think about whatever you do in social media with the intention to inspire others to want to share it and spread your news. The last example I want to share with you is the Courier Museum of Art. And they had an event, just like today, and their event was Secret Life of Art. And for the event, they decided that they were going to use a Twitter hashtag for the event. Now, what's a hashtag? Kind of sounds like a hash brown, but it's not the same thing. So this is an example of a hashtag right here. It's basically the pound sign with some words after it. And in their case, because the event was called Courier, Courier Secret Life of Art, they decided to create a hashtag that was Courier SLA for Secret Life of Art. You can create a hashtag, by the way, it doesn't cost anything on Twitter to do this. So if you're having an event, this is a great way to give out the hashtag in advance to people that are gonna attend your event. And then when the people came for the event, when they were tweeting about the event, they included this code or this hashtag in their tweets so that after the event or even during the event, the Courier Museum was able to, to then search by pound sign Courier SLA and see all the tweets that had to do with that topic. So as they were having this event, people were walking around and looking at the art and saying, well, I really like this piece of art. And oh, the red wine's pretty good, but they're almost out. Maybe it's time to leave. Well, then if they're watching that on Twitter, they might be able to go run out and get some more red wine to keep people there a little longer, right? Yeah, so it's a great way during the event to hear what's happening, as well as after the event to kind of collect feedback. And it's free to do this. So after they did this event, the, the exhibition they had was four months long. And here's what happened afterwards. Their Twitter following increased by 49%. Their likes on Facebook increased by 24%. And they added 760 email addresses to their email subscription to their newsletter just by using this hashtag and using social media. So this is something that you can do, and it's no cost. It's just your time. So let's do a quick overview of Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Facebook, with over 600 million users, it's a great place to start. And let me ask you, how many of you are using Facebook for your business right now? Congratulations, good, okay. So let's look at a Facebook page, but before we do that, let me just explain this quickly. If you're going to use Facebook, you'll notice that people are using it mostly in two different ways. You, you'll see they're using a friend, a way to grab new friends with their profile, or they're using a page. And how do you know the difference? Well, if somebody's using a 
personal profile, you'll see the button that says Add as Friend. If they are using a page, which is what we suggest for your business, then you'll see a Like button instead. And it's very easy to set this up, but here's what you need to know. In order to create a page for your business, you do have to have a personal profile with Facebook. That's like the trunk of your tree. And then you can put out there a page or multiple pages if you wish for your business. And what you need to know is those pages that you're sharing with customers and prospects, those people can't see your personal information. They are only seeing your page. The only way they can see your personal profile is if you accept their friendship when they request it by clicking that button, add as friend. And there are some businesses that tell me, Kelly, I want to use Facebook for my business, but I don't want to be friends with people from high school or college. I don't have time to do that. And here's the thing, you don't have to use this at all. You just need it to set it up, to set up that page, okay? And to, in order to set up that page, here's some instructions for you. We've put together a guide. In fact, we have three guides. We have a guide on how to set up a Facebook page, a Twitter account, and a LinkedIn account if you want some instructions. But here's the address to go to to get that Facebook quick guide. So let me show you a Facebook page of one of my favorite organizations. This is SCORE's Facebook page. And if you didn't know it, SCORE provides you with free business counseling that's confidential. It costs you nothing. And there's no trick here. This is funded by our government because guess what? When you succeed as small businesses, our economy succeeds, our country succeeds. So in essence, you are the heroes of our economy and we want you to succeed. So please use SCORE as a resource to help you with that. So here's SCORE's Facebook page. And a Facebook page is broken down into basically three different columns. The first column here shows at the top their logo. Underneath their logo, you will see links for their Facebook page. So right now, we are on their wall page of their Facebook page. Underneath the links for their page, you will see how many people like them, and you will get to see some of the people that score likes back. The middle column of the Facebook page at the very top has the title of their business. And in their case, they said score counselors to America's small business. And then right next to the title of that page, which would be your business name, there is a like button so that I can go to this page and like it and we're immediately connected. And did you know that Facebook pages help your SEO, search engine optimization? <laughs> Yeah, so when people do a Google search for you, that helps lift you up higher on the return of those searches. Now this also is interesting. There are five photos here shown underneath the title. So if you're putting together a page for your business, you'll want to put your logo in there. And if you have a picture of your business, maybe it's a brick and mortar, the outside, or maybe you want to take some pictures of employees or products or an event that you had. So we suggest you fill in these five photos. Underneath the five photos, you will see this is called the wall. And this is where SCORE gets to share valuable content with the people that like them. So as they're sharing articles or photos or videos, those things are going to show up here. And also, all the people that like this page are able to comment and say something back to SCORE on this wall as well. And I can give something a thumbs up if I like it, or I can write a comment and give them feedback in my words. 
This last column here is the column which includes ads. And Facebook allows you to purchase ads from them. Now, I've heard both positives and negatives about ads, so I'm not going to promote it either way or tell you you shouldn't do it. You could go and check it out if you like. The one positive about ads is they give you amazing demographics that you can promote to. So they can give you a spe specific age range in a specific zip code if you want to target that audience. So that's the page, and let me show you some more pages. But I'm going to go ahead and let this third column disappear. One more thing about this third column, at the top here, you'll see there's something called account with a pull down menu. And that's where you can find Facebook help if you have questions on how to do something in Facebook. Many people have populated the help with the answers to that. Here's the future of Facebook right here. This is Eagle Photography. And notice, when you go to their Facebook page, this is where you land. Now look, they've got automatically some examples of their products, and their logo is very long. This is the future of Facebook. These are called custom pages, and you don't have to do this to be successful, but I just want to show you this so you can see where it's going. And here's another one. This is a bed and breakfast. And notice they have a big, great big message here, like our page for a special offer. These look a lot like web pages now, don't they? Yeah, let's show you some more. Here's Hello Beautiful Face. And notice she's got buttons on the page where you can buy her products right through Facebook. Here's another one. Here's Hut Dogs. They actually do help you with creating custom pages if you need that. And they have included capturing email addresses on that landing page. Here's Sunnyland Pictures. And if you go to their Facebook page, their page is a video. So the video is moving, is changing, and you can click on the video to go to different pages within Facebook. Pretty cool. So the sky is the limit in terms of customization know that you can do these things if you work with somebody who has these skills. LinkedIn. It's highly used by B2B, business to business, associations, and nonprofits. And like we said, it's a public company now. Here's an example of a people profile page. And to be successful at LinkedIn, you need to fill out your profile to 100% completion. This is an example of Jared Smith. He's in Orange County, and he shared a success story with me that he created his LinkedIn profile to 100% completion, and he lives in Orange County, but somebody from Virginia found him, contacted somebody that they had in common, talked about Jared. So by the time he made up his mind to do business with Jared, this was now a very warm lead. And so how much did it cost Jared to fill out his profile to completion, 100%? Zero, just his time. I want to show you a couple other things you can do on LinkedIn. If you didn't know, you can add a presentation right in LinkedIn so you can share with people what it is you do. Also on LinkedIn, you can sh it also put your blog up there. So if somebody visits your LinkedIn page, they can see entries of your blog and those updates. LinkedIn also allows you to do a company profile because they see what's happening with Facebook pages. And so they allow you not only to be an individual, but to be a company. So you can see they've got He's the founder and the co-founder, and they have their services and products here on LinkedIn. You can also participate in group discussions, because it's not all about pushing out information. Sometimes it's getting involved in sharing information that you have with groups that are out on LinkedIn. Twitter is a little bit different, a different language, different symbols that are used, and you've only got those 140 characters or less to share that information. Here's an example of a Twitter page for the SBDC, and they've got their logo here, they've got their handle, 
And what is a handle? That's the at symbol with your business name or your name if the brand is your, you, you if you are your brand. This is where all of their tweets are, so you can see the information that they're sharing. You can see how many times they've tweeted. You can see who's following them, and you can see who they're following. So what we want you to do is make sure to populate your Twitter page if you're gonna use Twitter. Bless you. I met somebody recently who said to me, well, Kelly, I'm using Twitter for business and it's not really working out. And I said, well, what's wrong? What's not working? And he said, I signed up for an account and I don't have any followers. And I said, okay, well, what kind of information are you sharing on Twitter? And he said, I'm not sharing anything because nobody's following me. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. If I go to your Twitter page and I notice that it's empty, then I might not want to follow you. So make sure whether you have zero people or you have thousands, keep sharing that information because it's not whoever has the most followers that wins, okay? It's the engagement tool that you're using. It's the quality of those relationships. So a couple things with Twitter. Twitter allows you to retweet, and retweeting is good netiquette, like etiquette, but on the web, because you would never want to see a tweet that somebody put out and just copy it and paste it and pretend that you're the author. So we suggest you give proper respect back to the author of that tweet by using something called retweet. And Twitter lets you do this if you just hover over somebody's tweet, a little pop-up menu happens below, and you can just click on retweet, and now you're sharing that information on behalf of the author. An old school way of doing this is using RT. So if you ever see RT, that's what that means. It means retweet, that works too. But again, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. One thing that you will need to do on Twitter is share links. So you'll have information to say, and that a link is a way to say to read on or to show a photo album or a video pertaining to whatever you're sharing in your tweet. And you can see here's a hashtag in here. And let's go and look at a hashtag that we recently used last week. It was to celebrate Small Business Week for 2011. We created this hashtag. And I can go to Twitter and just type in pound sign SBW 2011. And I can see every time that somebody tweeted about Small Business Week 2011 and used that hashtag, that special code in their tweet. And I can read everything about this topic. So if you want to just check out Twitter and maybe search for a hashtag, like maybe pound sign small biz and see what comes up and see what people are saying. It's a good way to get more information. In all of these examples, content was king. And remember, I'm going to give you a copy of this presentation if I got your business card. So you'll get a PDF actually of the two hour version of this. But here's some ideas on content. It's not all about you sharing. Sometimes it's you joining into a conversation or partnering with another small business or a nonprofit to do your social media marketing. But always think about how you can make your, the lives of your customers better or easier or give them advice. And that's the content that you can provide. Here's a few don'ts for social media marketing. You don't want to pitch. You don't want to be overly promotive of yourself. And you would never want to offer an incentive in order to get a review. So I live in Long Beach, and a spa in Long Beach sent out an email and said, write us a five-star review on Yelp, print it out, bring it into the spa, and we'll give you a free massage but Yelp knows what you're doing, and they pulled all of those five-star reviews that happened within that short time period, because they caught on very quickly, 
And guess what? People came in with their printed five-star review and they had to honor them, so they actually lost money. So it's okay to reward somebody after the fact of them writing a review, but you would never want to ask for it up front. And you want to avoid things like being too personal or getting into religion or politics or even sports. So my friend Rabbi Dove came to one of my seminars and I said, Rabbi, for you it's okay to talk about religion, that is your business, but you need to avoid sports, okay? And he said, got it. So let's talk about ways you can build your social network. Here's five ways and you can do these today. First, when you talk to customers on the phone, tell them you're on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn or in your after hours voicemail, say, hey, we're not here right now, but find us on Facebook. The next way is when you're exchanging business cards, make sure that you put the symbol of Facebook on your business card or the address of your Facebook page so people can find you there. The next way is in your email signature with your one-to-one -one communication, whether you're using Outlook, AOL, Twitter, or I'm sorry, AOL, or Gmail, there's my buzzer going off. Make sure that in that signature line, you're also including either the links to your social media sites or those icons that they can click on and go immediately there. And two more, on your place of business, if you do have a place of business or if you're at an expo like today, make sure you let people know who come up to your table or buy at your business that you're on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. You can print something out and put it on your door or behind some plexiglass to let people know. And finally, don't forget about your website. Cross-promote your tools. So if you're using Twitter, talk about what you're doing on Facebook. On your website, make sure you list that you're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Make it easy for your customers to connect where they prefer. So I think it's time for us to do our raffle. I'm gonna have James Bond come up here and help me pick the winner. I love your name. Where is the bowl, by the way? Does anybody have it? Somewhere over here? Oh, there it is. They didn't take it, it's here. Oh, here's another one, okay, great. So we are gonna raffle off three books, and remember, if you put your business card in here, if you put your business card in here, you will get a copy of the two-hour version of this presentation. So mix them up really good, James, and don't look. And the first winner gets to choose first which book they want. Again, email marketing with constant contact or social media marketing. For dummies, your choice. Oh, there's another card over there. Let me grab it. Thanks. Okay, James, let me put this one in. All right, here we go. So the first winner goes to congratulations. James is going to pull it out, Mr. 007. You pick. I don't want the pressure of picking. That's why I gave it to you. <laughs> okay, without looking, here you go. Congratulations goes to... Uh, surf Camp, Jeff Belzer. Yes! Which would you like? He should get all books, right? For that? That would be awesome. Yeah, they're the same. All right, he's going to take the email marketing, but congratulations to you, Jeff. You're the best winner I've ever seen. <laughs> Don't worry, you have two more chances. Okay, James, she's got a business card she wants to put in, if you wouldn't mind. Still a less chance. There, I'll mix them up for you. Okay, go for it, James. And the next winner goes to congratulations to... Mission Church of the Nazarene, Dinah Herber. Yeah. Where are you? There she is. <laughs> Dinah, which book would you prefer, the social media or the email marketing? Email, okay. Here you go. Congratulations to you, Dinah. And you were a great winner, too. So. <laughs> All right, so you still have a chance to win the social media marketing for dummies, and whoever wins this is not a dummy. So congratulations goes to Matt Reserve. 
Are you here? Matt, oh, I'm sorry, not, res is that reserve? Razine? Razine, there you are. Sorry about that, Matt. So I want to thank all of you for your time today and wish you much success in 2011. Please use SCORE to your advantage. And for social media marketing, just go for it. You can do this. Best of luck.